Welcome to the Arizona Real Estate Show with Pat McMaster's Price Mortgage, Jackie and Ruby with the Arizona Foothills Century 21. I said that backwards. That's all right. We're backwards half the time. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to catch up. <laughs> going to be an interesting show today. Well, both Pat and I have got a lot of stuff to, to share, and I know you two do as well. But I want to start with something really unusual and a request from our for our community. I've got a... Uh, uh, loyal subscriber that contacted me this week. And we talked for a long time. He's got an Airbnb up in Sedona. And it's a beautiful looking place. And right now you show it's 547 a night. Um, he has had zero bookings in two months. And October's coming up and that's wedding season up there in Sedona. Now he has played with the price. So before people say, you know, I want to find out why he's not getting bookings. Um, he played with the price and went really low. So he got one booking Thanksgiving and one booking Christmas. Mm. And he thinks because somebody sorted by price and they bumped into him. The issue that we're finding when we look at this is if we just do a search up there for eight beds, you know, certain price point, he doesn't show up. We could not get his house to show up unless he just went to his direct link like we did with this one. So I'm going to put the link in the description below and ask people to take a look at it. And if you're Airbnb experts out there, tell us how we can get his place ranked up because it's uh, it's really hurting him um, financially. I mean, you you expect to have a few empty days and a few empty weeks, but his his Airbnb person is just saying, well, you got to give it time. And I'm not I'm not buying that as as well. So I think uh, actually, yeah, my uh, my mom is a Airbnb super host and. She has an Airbnb in Colorado. So I'll ask her and see what we can come up with. Yeah, because the super hosts show up. But then I noticed one other thing, too. I said, there's one on there that says new and it's on page one. Why aren't you on page one? Have you ever been on page one? He goes, no, I can't find it. So mm -hmm. there's something, Weird. something going on. That'd be great. Yeah, yeah. So uh, the other thing, looking at this chart here, which is the number of new listings coming on. And I just saw a video by Dave Walters, and he started uh, – um, comparing some Redfin data and Realtor.com data. And this is happening across the country. New listings are not showing up. And you can see our flat line here on homes under contract, right? So I took this and I said, well, back in, back here, see that little spot right there? Uh -huh. All of the new listings were getting going under contract. So I said, well, what, how much of that has changed? And so I put this in this tab here called percent under contract in February, 99% of the new listings uh, were going under contract seven day period. This doesn't mean the new listing sold, you know, in seven days, but it's saying, you know, I had 4,800 homes come on the market. And we had 4,800 contracts or 4,600. And then it dropped to 87 in March, 87 in April. May, and then look at June, boom, 69. July, 56%. That's why the inventory is building up. Right. August was 61. August 31st, it popped back up to 72. And we're starting to see that. So we're starting to see that not the combination of new listings coming down and sales coming up just a little bit, and it changes the percentage. So I just thought that was a different way to, to track it. You can see pending listings also came up as well for August 27th. Price cuts per week per day. And this is something that I agreed with when I was looking at Walter's video uh, about an hour ago. They're, they're decreasing. And the reason I think they're decreasing and he thinks they're decreasing, the price changes, is um, people are getting the word that you just can't price high right out the get-go. So the number price reductions are starting to decrease um, and that'll probably get uh, creep back up a little bit again, but people are starting out. So starting out hot, they're starting out more realistic. Right. Home well, sale. Rick, yes. I, I think the other thing is too, and I had said this a few weeks ago, I expected the buyer activity to come up. Um, but I think the reason we're not seeing as many price reductions as well is we had a period of time there where, listings were getting nothing, no showings whatsoever. Yeah. Now with a little more activity picking up and buyers coming through the houses, the sellers aren't as quick 
to drop the price because they're seeing some activity. So I think that's got an effect as well. Yeah, it's interesting to see how long it lasts. And when I, I'm looking forward to hearing from you, Pat, on where rates are right now. But uh, home sale can cancellations rise in remarkably uncertain time for the market. Moody's had an article about um, how many markets, 38 markets that were overpriced. And they gave Flagstaff as an example. It was overpriced by over 60%. But then they said, that doesn't mean that we expect prices to reduce, fall by 60%. But they may go down as low as 25%. So they went city by city. So this is price drop prediction season. And um, so I also looked up M2, which is money supply, which is the Federal Reserve Central Bank. Look at all this money they injected into our system here, right? And now they're tightening credit and trying to pull money supply out of the market and it's starting to come down. And this is mortgage-backed securities, Pat. I mean, up, down, up, down. I don't see them dumping them yet. I see a little up and down, but I don't see them letting go of them. I and heard they're going to start selling tomorrow. Is well, that correct? We'll, we'll see. They, have a, they, have, a schedule. they the have a schedule that they sell. I mean, yeah, uh, on a daily basis. This is consumer sentiment. This drives a lot of things. This drives retail. This drives stock market. This drives housing. And you can see that in April, it was 65.2 and it dropped to 50. So consumer sentiment will be affecting our real estate market just as much as interest rates and everything else. So I just thought I'd throw some of those charts out there for you. But Pat, um, um, looks like rates went up this week from what I'm seeing. Yeah, my uh, actually, hold on one second here. My chart is not acting up. It's acting up again. Um, where are we at? Am I sharing my screen here? There you sure. are. There we go. Yeah, I mean, we're uh, <laughs> right now we're the 10 year treasury is 319 today. Obviously, the we had the uh, four and a half coupon down 39 basis points. We saw a soft the last couple of last. Uh, let me pull this back, this chart here. If I can, this computer has been running really slow. You can see right here, um, August 1st. You know, we've the last 30 days we're seeing this anticipation of the feds September 20th. This is the same kind of action that we saw before the feds came out last time. You know, you see this downward, upward moving rates. Once the news comes out, I think it's gonna be choppy, obviously, in the next couple of weeks. Um, you know, we go back between inflation, as I said, or recession. Things are pointing toward obviously things are slow, and so you see this downward step in price, and uh, which means rates are going up, but um. It's going to be choppy, as I said, but I think, um, you know, the next 30 days, but I think once, I, I think toward, um, let's see, we got end of, we're in September, you know, once we, you know, the next three weeks are going to be choppy until September 20th. And I think you're going to see some But I like that chart. It really shows what happens when it breaks through that bottom trend line. Well, yeah, I mean, you look, this is what you kind of have to look at on a short-term basis. What I look at, you, you have a channel. I mean, let me see here. Give me yeah. one second here. This is not my computer is not cooperating for some reason today. But you get these channels. You see how this you got this you got this channel right in here. Yeah. That's you know, that, so those channels will create support or a ceiling on it rates short term. And when it busts out, we're having this run now the last 30 days of rates going up. But I think you're, it'll pause. I mean, we got the numbers coming out on Friday, employment numbers. So. You know, the Fed, this one Fed master said that, uh, you know, they're going to be, it's going to be painful the next couple months, you know, and they're going to keep it painful. But then obviously, they're gonna, I think they're going to put the squeeze on everybody here the next four to six months. But then I think middle of next year, I mean, I think rates will, it might be a while before rates kind of subside, but they're definitely in this channel um, in, in anticipation of the Feds. But uh, once it, it's always that, once the news comes out, rates go, you know, go down. People think rates are going up, but they actually go down. And this is the anticipation of, you know, the Fed's kind of their news coming out. So, I mean, the uh, it's kind of interesting, though, how I was reading something here that the, like on the in the mortgage side of it, they're saying that, you know, obviously there's a lot of lenders that are laying off. Um, the MBA, the Mortgage Bank Bankers Association, said based on today's production the industry is going to have to scale back by about 25 to 30 percent wow and the scale back right now has only been about 10 percent 
So they got another, there's a, there's going to be a lot more cuts. Uh, you know, there's definitely some gloom and doom in the mortgage business, but there's still people out there. I'm seeing the sense. I mean, I'm sure you, ladies and Rick, you're seeing it too, is that uh, there's still people out there pulling it away, trying to look at a buy. Yeah. I've had a busy week. My phone uh, rang a lot this week, but I think I also was watching Barry Habib and he was explaining a lot about uh, the relationship with inflation and recessions and said that um, whenever we have um, or inflation, all interest rates always follow behind inflation. And then when inflation starts coming down, it takes a while for the interest rates to react. But once inflation gets under control, then interest rates tend to come down. But he said the other tricky thing is, is that interest rates always decline 100 percent of the time during a recession. And make no doubt about it, the central bank is pushing for a recession. Yeah. So um, how severe it's going to be, we don't know. They, you know, remember, they pushed to get inflation up to 4%. They did that on purpose and they injected all that money into the system. Now they have to make credit harder to get because we're a debt driven economy. And so they're going to tighten things uh, across the board, especially credit cards, consumer debt. And uh, so they're going to, they're going to put the squeeze to us and we'll see what happens. Like you said, you know, they may just be loading their gun. <laughs> yeah, I think they are. I mean, I, that's, I mean, I, when you're at zero, you can't go any further. I was reading something, an article uh, the other, last week. It says, you know, it says, can lower mortgage rates stop the housing recession? You know, because they were saying that the wild ride that we had from 2.78 to about six, you know, six and a quarter. And um, there was a lot of drama, you know, kind of like we had the drama back in 13 and 14 when rates went from three and a half to four and a half. We've had a lot more drama going from two and seven eighths to six. But um, he says it's been a big deal. But he said rates, you're going to if you see them choppy like this, he says, you're not going to see any stabilization until you see some type of stabilization. He said in the four, four and a half range with interest rates, because, you know, he made a good, there's one guy that wrote the article. He says, you know, if rates do drop quickly, it takes a long, people have got to get ramped up in the buying home buying process. They just don't turn If rates drop on Monday. They're not out buying a house, trying to buy a house on Tuesday. So you're going to have this, this choppiness. He said, until you get some stabilization in that area, it's it's going to obviously affect home home purchases. Yeah, that makes we're, sense. We're definitely I think I'm actually hmm. seeing that right now because, um, you know, we had the rates drop and it's like I was telling people it's a great time to buy. We got the inventory. The rates are back down, you know, low fours. They were decent. And then I had well, I had one buyer last week came to the table. He's ready to go. And he had talked to uh, Navy Fed a few weeks ago when rates were lower, found a house, and I told him you need to talk to the lender again. And sure enough, it had knocked him back out of the market with the increase in the rates again. So yeah. it's like the people were just starting to ramp back up, I think. Nah, I mean, not ramp. That might be an exaggeration of the word. Um, but people were starting to feel comfortable and start coming back. And then here we got rates coming back up again. So it'll yeah. be interesting to see what happens. <laughs> I look at national inventory numbers. The chart looks the same as Arizona. We have plateaued. We're yeah. stuck. 63% of the people that I surveyed on our channel says they're staying put because they have a good rate. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so that's clearly happening. But what are you, what are you seeing in the market? Are your showings going up? Are you getting, uh, more activity, less activity, and and then secondly, um, of the houses that you've got listing listed, um, have you had to make any radical price reductions yet? We've we've made price reduct reductions, and we've suggested price reductions, but it's we're having a hard time with the sellers. You know, they're coming down twenty five hundred, five thousand. We're needing to come down and you know we tried to educate them ahead of time before we went on the market this is probably where we need to be we can try what you want but based off activity we're going to have to make adjustments and so you know we had some listings that had absolutely no showings and we've made some reductions 2500 to 5000 you in that um first time home buyer price point but i they they need to come down a little more because we're seeing i i think what's hurting us quite a bit is all the iBuyers with their reductions too. 
So there's so many reductions happening. You know, you got a house on a street and two two eye buyers down the street and they're making reductions or in the same subdivision and it's actually making our listings adjust with it right are they right. are they adjusting below i mean i, I let's do an example they they uh um because they overbought the price mm -hmm. and then they they marked them up too much when they adjust them down are they adjusting them down lower than your comps or are they coming down to meet those some of them some yeah. of them some of them are, they're, it, you know, yeah, but they've been on the market for so long that they waited too long to do it. You know, they stayed up there too long. They aged the listing and kind of turning people off from it. You know, somebody sees a listing on the market for 90 days, 120 days in this market, they automatically assume something's wrong with it. And so their price adjustments are having to get at least the ones I'm seeing a little bit more aggressive. Where had they priced more appropriately in the beginning, they may not have had to adjust that much. And so it's having a, a ripple effect on the listings around it. Well, but we have open, had more showing requests. This, sorry, Rick. Um, we've had more showing requests this um, last week. So that's good news on our listings. So more yeah, people. I, I just put a, uh, a townhome up yesterday and I told the clients, I go, it's Labor Day weekend. I don't expect much. I mean, don't be surprised if we, we don't get a showing for a week. And I got an appointment today and an appointment tomorrow. So I'm pretty excited That's about great. that. Like, like, all right, here we go. But uh, but speaking of open door, um, evidently they don't think we know how to do math. Um, they were <laughs> offering a $3,500 agent bonus. And as we spoke on the show a couple of weeks ago, uh, that bonus was going to expire on anything that closed before September 30th. We were going to pass that on to you as a buyer credit. Well, now... They've gotten rid of the September 30th deadline. They're leaving the bonus up there for the agent, but they reduce the agent's commission to where when you add up the commission that they're paying and the bonus, it's a wash. If they would just leave the commissions where they were in the first place, it just it's like, oh, an agent bonus, 3,500 bucks. Wait, I'm only getting, you know, I think they're down to 2%. And uh, so th that's not going to be incentive for anybody. And it puts us in a position now where, where we can't offer that as a as a buyer credit anymore because right. they've just completely taken it off the well, table. And, and even if we wanted to, some brokerages won't allow you to. Some some of the bigger brokerages, like where we are, they've got a cap. So when they were at the two and a half percent, even at the two and a half percent, we could take that thirty five hundred dollars and credit it back to the buyer. Now that they've dropped to the two percent, we don't have it. I mean, I think there were a lot of you know, they, they, I don't, they don't know if they're coming or going. They just don't. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty bizarre, but um, Pat, you had, um, do you still have that other chart you kind of had for um, federal reserve purchases? Uh, Is that what you're. If you give me $5, I'll show it to you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what this means. You asking me? <laughs> <laughs> You're the expert in this. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it basically shows. You know, like Ruby. I mean, uh, Jackie said that people people have got this notion that the feds are just going to stop buying mortgage-backed securities, but this is just they have a schedule every day that they go in and buy. You know, they got uh, 338 million. You know these. Uh, Fannie Mae, four point. You know, these, these are coupon rates four, four and a half, five. You got 338 million. They do a max cap. You know, 756 million. That was uh, on Monday. You know, on Tuesday, they you know the max did 100, 101 million. Um, so they're you know they're they're still going in. They're active. I mean, this tapering, this MBS tapering, is not gonna. I mean, it's not gonna be people that are getting excited about it. It's it's going to be over um, a three to five year process. They don't know it's it's going to be like 2025, 2026. You know they've got trillions of dollars on the on their portfolio, but they go in it every day and they. I mean I've got to look back. I didn't. <laughs> I got this one document PDF saved. I think remember I showed you a couple of weeks ago that you know I saved it from about four or five months ago. So I want to compare to see what their activity was back in like I think it was January, February, March. But they're still going in. I mean. Um, if you can see here, yeah, I mean, 338 million. Um, 
let's see here. They got, you know, they got now September 7th. So they got all these scheduled purchases that are going on. So they're still scooping them up. So Pat, I have a question for you. So I, I've seen all these, and this is why I asked, I don't know, a month ago or whenever it was, um, you know, there's all these YouTube shows that I've seen out there that say um, they're going to start selling. And once they start selling, then it makes the value less, would make interest rates go up. So is that just more clickbait out there happening? Is that? I think there's some truth. But I don't know how, I've never seen anybody gauge how much of an effect. I mean, um, yeah, the extreme stuff is clickbait, I believe. I mean, because, but this is something they're doing behind the scenes. So I don't think anybody can really gauge what they're doing. Now, when rates, what we can see up front is obviously when the Federal Reserve pumps up rates three quarters of a point, we can see the activity there. But, you know, I, I think the market's so big that I, I mean, my personal opinion is they're not going to ever just go away, you know, and everybody thinks they're just going to get out of the market and never buy these things, but they have to keep the market fluid. Um, you know, some interest, some coupons, are more attractive than others i mean you know it just depends what you know where the buyers are so i mean yeah a lot of it's click you, you everybody needs clickbait somewhere so but this is yeah, stuff that's it's, behind the scenes you know people you know comment on mine that you know that i'm not telling the entire big picture well i'm i'm not an economist i mean i i i see some big ticket items out there that concern me and i see some storm clouds that that are out there. And I mean, most of it's, uh, has to do with our debt and our spending. And, but I'm not going to go down that rabbit hole on this channel. I'd rather just say, here's where we're at. Here's what this mm -hmm. means. Here's what it looks like the midterm trend is. And I'm just not going to get into a debate of, uh, of, uh, uh modern money theory. <laughs> There's so, too much money out there. Well, I mean, this yeah. chart. I mean, uh, th I think that chart shows that they're they're still active. They do this every day. Um, now, I think we're in a market now. You know, you have to look at the uh, technicals, but you also, I think, you have to just look at the psychology of everybody. Where are we at? You know. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. See, I just covered you up there, Pat. So, um, <laughs> yeah. I, uh, yeah, we're. We're seeing, if that don't uh, make somebody subscribe, nothing will. Yeah. Here's here's what I here's what I'm saying, ladies. Tell me if you're seeing the same thing because I've been getting a lot of calls of people say they're planning to buy. And Pat and I met with uh, some potential buyers yep. this last week and had coffee. They're planning to buy. They're trying to get a sense of what their timing should be. They want to know what to look at to see if it's a good time to get in or not, and uh, and how. What steps do they have to do to prepare? So I like to kind of answer those those questions, but I also need to caution people that, you know, nobody knows for sure. Nobody's going to get, and we just lost Pat, nobody's going to get um, a notice that says, okay, now's the time. You have to be on top of the numbers and you have to be on top of the market. And then, right. and then at that point, you'll know. You'll know because you watch the trends, you know where inventory is, you know where rates are, and more importantly, you know what you can afford and you know what kind of house you want. But I'm getting more and more of those questions, which is different than the big debacle in 2008, where nobody was asking those questions and there was nobody oh. back there waiting to buy. Right. We have a ton of people waiting to buy, and, uh, and they're just waiting for affordability to correct itself. There's no denying that. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Or they're waiting for the big crash that they are expecting. Yeah. But I just don't see it. I was watching, I watched the listings. I signed on a couple of times a day and I noticed about midday, they dropped by 200. That's interesting. Yeah. Listing. So well, I'm not seeing a lot of cancel cancellations. They're not coming up that much. They went up maybe a hundred. Yeah. And then when I, when I looked yesterday, you know how you can look at the, the hot sheet. So yeah. I looked at the new listings that came on. It was like, and I could be off on the numbers. It was about 400 and something. And then the pendings, it was like 280 or something like that. And then the under contract and the uh, uh, contract with contingency. And those were, I think it was like 35 or 40 more than the listings that had come on. 
So I thought that was interesting. There's another interesting thing going on too as well. And this, this kind of shows you that there's a lot of agents just not telling sellers the truth about the actual market that we're in right now. The truth is yeah. sales are at the basement. They're record lows. Sales are record lows. Inventory has climbed, not because new listings are coming on, but the bottom line is it's slow. It's going to take a long time to sell your house. You may not get your asking price. You're going to have to watch it carefully and you're, you may have to adjust at pretty big increments. And people are putting their house on for eight days and then taking it off the market. Well, I tried. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And and, my and photographer, she agent, told me. That's the agent's fault for not educating them enough up front. Just saying this is where our market is right now. You are not going to sell right away. We, you need to be prepared to be on the market. You know, it could be two weeks. Just depends on where you're at. It could be a month or more, 60 days. It just, you know, it depends. Yeah, I'm not going to spend the money to take on your listing if you only want to give it one good week. <laughs> right. I mean, we're not in it to lose money in our yeah. goal is their house yeah. sold. Yeah, it's rough. Yeah. It's rough. It's well, rough. there's a lot of new agents out there, though, too, guys. Remember that, that, you know, everybody and their mother went and got their real estate license yeah. in the last two years. We had like 40,000 agents in the air in Maricopa County. And so those agents don't even know what a normal market is. No. let alone a shifting market or, you know, I mean. Well, like Pat and I are always sharing information and stuff we see on Facebook. <laughs> oh, it's God. entertaining. There's some entertaining stuff. Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, no, hear okay. You. okay. I, I was, I think I vanished for about a minute too. I could hear everybody, but I, I think you probably just deleted me for a while. Um, since I've been fresh and new since the last two we weeks. We pause. I have a button here. It's labeled cleanse. Um, but, you know, at Facebook, I mean, yeah, you're seeing a lot of agents. There's a lot of just the market's going through cleansing. The mortgage business is going through cleansing, as I said, with these, you know, these cutbacks. Uh, agents that got in. I him, Rick and I were, I was, I went on this real estate Facebook. And there's this agent that was. She'd been in business a year and she was complaining. She goes, oh, my God, my listing. I think I mentioned this a couple weeks ago. She goes, oh, my God, my listings hasn't sold in 30 days. It's still it's still on the market. I'm like, you know, these too many agents, they didn't have to put a sign on. They had 30 offers, 40 offers. We're just going through this cleansing market right now. And it's going to be, I, my personal opinion, choppy, as I said. But I think uh, you got to re realize, too, that interest rates do cause uh point of reflection for the seller too because if they're looking to sell they're looking to buy potentially so they're looking you know that's also affecting the seller not just the you know we always say about the buyer but that seller is probably a buyer on the other side and that's why they're also looking at the interest rates too well there's so, also you know, a okay, lot of anxiety sell, but, hmm? well there's also a lot of anxiety that if there's a recession coming and i'm in the tech industry how secure is my job right yeah mm -hmm. yeah I saw something today that there is a, 11 million job openings or something like that. So for every person that's claiming unemployment, there's two jobs available. I saw that too. Yeah. People just aren't wanting to work. But we're just a bucket of good news today, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> we're just telling the facts. Well, the truth. <laughs> like this. We got to. <laughs> the doom and gloom network. Yeah. <laughs> Ratings just, just went up. Well, you know, I mean, I think I'll come up with a really are, gloomy thumbnail for this. One. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, uh, you know, I got a question for for you guys. Um, ever since they put that second home, the loan level pricing adjustment, uh, did you see any effect on people buying second or that we're going to buy a second home that didn't because of the loan level pricing adjustment? Uh, that you know two or three four yeah, points I, I, I don't know huh i haven't encountered any of those I, I see people that were buying second homes that have held off and airbnbs that have actually said we're not buying um but i don't know that that has any i don't know truly okay. i spoke sure. with a guy today and his friend bought an airbnb and he got it in scottsdale and he was all ready to uh, get it all set, but it needed some house needed some unexpected improvements. And he says, and now he doesn't have enough money to furnish it. Oh no. And he said, and he bought it at the top of the market. 
And I said, well, I just remember somebody saying once that, you know, you can't be an expert in real estate and tourism at the same time. And mm. our Airbnb um, market is starting to get very saturated. And one of the things when I did look at the Airbnb situation in Scottsdale, every one of them had a line through their price and then the new lower price. Yeah. In mm. Sedona. And which I still don't think was the issue that we're having with that guy not getting a just, you just can't find his place. So, but the, everyone just boom, boom, boom. And mm. yet I don't think tourism has been affected in Sedona. It was probably a couple of weeks where maybe it was when gas prices got up to five fifty, but now I, they're, they're still pretty, pretty active and pretty busy, but there's just an oversaturation of Airbnbs and same old supply and supply and demand. You got a whole bunch of them. You're going to pay less. And, and Airbnbs are something for the most part in those big houses, you're going to rent if you're going up with another family. Right. Mm -hmm. Who wants to spend 500 bucks a day? So right. not me. I just take my travel trailer. <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> so it goes. Well, we'll continue to watch these numbers and uh, we will be back next Thursday. Until then, everybody, have a good one. All, All right. right. Take care. Bye. Bye.